Okay, my name is Gareth Law and I'm the co-founder and technical lead for Debitrack. Debitrack um, design and manufacture cashless payment systems and basically what that is is a you can go to a point of sale, produce a card or a key fob and pay for your items from an online account. Now most people are familiar with uh, contactless payments these days with you know MasterCard or Visa or Apple Pay and what we do is our technology is kind of similar except our key difference is that we are a closed loop system so that means that uh, our system will only function within a certain location or premises or a logical network so for example a, a school or a, a university campus or a, an office building or a factory so the main uh, advantage uh, of our system versus just simply paying with a credit or debit card is that our customers who are the uh, people who uh, implement the cashless system can introduce uh, other uh, features as part of the, the, the project. So for example in a university they can have bursary payments um, or uh, hardship payments, um, free school meals, that kind of thing. Or in, a, in a, an office uh, environment you can grant staff a free coffee on a Friday from uh, the vending machine or something similar. Uh, the reason why we uh, adopted a cloud strategy with, with Debitrack is that traditionally with closed loop cashless systems um, they were on-premises solutions because of the nature of a closed loop um, uh, solution. So um, these, uh, back in the early days if I can call it that, um, it was difficult to support and maintain that software because it's installed inside your customer's network and we had to quite often arrange remote access to, to servers and infrastructure and even send people to, to site to, to adjust settings or, or make changes or upgrade. So as uh, over time as broadband uh, and, and fiber optic networks became kind of commonplace and our customer base started to uh, avail of these uh, fast communication sort of infrastructure um, we realized that it was now possible to develop a system that targeted uh, a cloud platform and, and essentially run uh, the cashless closed loop cashless systems uh, off-site and uh, with a minimal um, uh, deployment uh, in, on, on premises this had a, a clear benefit for our for product line because all of a sudden we don't have to invest uh, time in, in putting people on site. We don't have to um, worry about uh, scheduling upgrades or arranging remote access or having to be intrusive on, on internal IT. Um, we can affect a lot of those things remotely and control the cloud uh, from, our, from our base here and support our customer better, deliver a better service and therefore uh, becomes more cost effective for us in the long run and uh, makes it easier for us to deliver a really good solution. We, um, when we took a decision to, to uh, run on a cloud-based platform, we had to essentially redesign our product, our software. Um, it had to be uh, rebuilt. And this um, kind of coincided with our uh, decision to uh, create a new product uh, called Debitrack, which was a, a, a cloud-based cashless system designed from the ground up to, for that uh, type of deployment. Um, we did our research, of course. Uh, we had our technical skills here uh, in house anyway for software development, but targeting a cloud uh, solution, uh, a web-based cloud solution versus a on-premises client-server solution is a different architecture, and therefore we need to, uh, you know, investigate that, make sure we make the right decisions, and we went through a process of of uh, testing, uh, road mapping the software, prototyping on different cloud providers uh, and, and just trying to build up our internal knowledge as to how we deliver that successfully. Um, now when we, when we speak to one of our customers who has a more traditional system that's hosted on premises we uh, can uh, migrate them to the cloud um, with their understanding that there are certain non-technical things to consider. So for example their, their information that they hold currently on premises, the database of, of, uh, of information their information about the card holders and account balances and so on will now be hosted on the cloud. And we do have to go through a process of uh, you know, uh, kind of assuring them that that's going to be secure and we have uh, you know, a, a fully robust system that won't um, uh, disappear uh, one day uh, when they come into the office in the morning. So there's a little bit of hearts and minds there for our customers to convince them 
but once they see the solution and we can describe the benefits then it uh, generally works out quite well. Yes, uh, data protection is, is, a, is a sensitive issue, um, particularly when we talk about financial information. Now, our system, as I've described, is closed loop, so we don't deal with credit card numbers and, and bank details as such, but we still hold uh, a balance of funds that someone has, has injected into the system. They've, they've transferred that money in and that's theirs. So we have to make sure that the system is secure. We, uh, we have a, a, a consideration for PCI compliance, which is when you hold any information about an individual beyond basic information such as their name and their surname, possibly their mobile phone number, their email address. When you start gathering a kind of demographic of, of someone's details, you need to consider your PCI compliance level. Now at current, we try to operate on a, on a, on a kind of minimal uh, level because PCI compliance is quite a difficult process to go through, but as we grow, um, that's something we would consider investing time in to reach that compliance level and, and, and be certified. Okay. The main benefit that we see, and it's, um, it's, it's expected um, from our point of view, sometimes our customers don't realise it until they try to, uh, they, they understand the differences, is that when we deliver a system to a customer, for example a university, uh, the provision of servers and infrastructure to run the software isn't necessarily the remit of the people that we're selling the system to. So they will internally have to go to a, an IT department or a, a separate department and negotiate with them the delivery of infrastructure and servers and backup and who supports it. Um, for example, even having a network point added somewhere on the premises usually involves they, they have to engage uh, with the IT department who will subcontract internally to maintenance and just to physically put that point in place. So whenever we arrive uh, and say, you don't need to put up a server, um, you just need to make sure you have a, a, a secured internet connection and you can reach our, our cloud. That takes quite a chunk away. That doesn't completely remove it um, because we still have some locally, uh, local presence there in terms of our payment readers on the point of sale. Um, but it, it removes a significant part of it that before would have to be uh, delivered by the customer. And that extends not only to hardware, but also the software licensing, uh, say Microsoft uh, server licenses uh, and all that kind of stuff is, is, is removed. Now we have to, um, that's our, our cost uh, that we take on, but uh, in our, the way we price the product and we sell it, um, we include this in a kind of subscription model so that uh, over time they, they are paying for the service but it's not a capital cost for them on day one, or uh, even to, to put in a, a, a test system that they want to run for uh, a short period of time. Um, they would still have to invest in this, uh, this, this platform. Whereas with our system, we can come in, we can run a trial for 60 days, and if they like it, that's great. If they don't, they can turn it off. In terms of reservations, we have, um, there have been a few things we need to consider. Um, and they're, they're not insurmountable problems, but they just have to be considered when we talk to the customer. When we, uh, when we look at the suitability for a cloud-based application um, in certain locations. Um, for example, uh, if we have some primary school in rural Ireland uh, where the internet connectivity is, isn't a great or they're reliant on maybe a 3G or a 4G connection, um, we have to really assess that and say, we can run a system there you may have uh, some bumps in your connectivity which will impact the success of, of, of your, uh, your operation and in those circumstances what we've tried to do is offer uh, an on-premises version of our, our cloud-based product. So we do have uh, a version that we can strip down and place as a traditional on-premises uh, system. So we've tried to follow both tracks. Uh, which is, is really um, just a case of us being sensible and working, looking at our spectrum of, of customers through the market and saying, well, there will be occasions whenever the physical infrastructure can't support a, a cloud connection or uh, vice versa, they, they have a, um, a particular uh, problem with their data residing offsite. Some, um, on some occasions, we have customers who are maybe 
banks or secure organizations, prisons or somewhere like that, where we won't uh, be allowed to host information off-site. It's just a company-wide policy. It doesn't really matter what the information is. They just want everything to be uh, kept on premises and that gives them uh, peace of mind. So we've had to develop two solutions, two variants of our product. Another slight reservation we have would be from our perspective, um, when we go uh, to the market and we look at various cloud hosting providers, cloud platform providers, so Amazon, Microsoft, uh, things like that, and the cost of uh, us putting up a cloud-based solution. Now, uh, in, in the old days, we could, if you had one customer, you put in one system and you knew exactly where the cost boundaries were with that. Um, if we uh, offer a cloud-based solution, we have to invest in a cloud platform that can maybe handle up to 25 customers or up to 50 and move it in blocks. Now, um, the the adverse effect of that is that on day one, even if you have one customer, you're, you're, you still have to invest quite a lot in your cloud platform and your costs for running that system. So we've had to project ahead and say we're going to invest in a, in a, a system that will take this much capacity uh, for the next 12 months. Um, we could uh, hopefully we'll fill that capacity. We you know we we've kind of done our uh, looked at our targets and our sales targets. If we don't fill that capacity, we still have that cost. So that was another consideration, and possibly something that um, would would influence your your decision to develop a cloud product. You need to have at least a vision of some volume of customers to go on there, um, in a, in a sort of twelve to eighteen months period to make it feasible. Yeah. As our product develops, we have obviously. Uh, plans to um, uh, enhance the, the cloud compatibility of the software. At the moment, we maybe sit somewhere between a, an application that's hosted on the cloud and an application that's actually cloud-based, um, and that's because we have a, we're, we're kind of evolving the product. Now, as time goes on, uh, we may start to introduce more completely cloud-centric features, such as some of the load balancing uh, functionality that's available through the, uh, the providers, maybe um, some, some messaging type functionality that runs across the cloud and, and links up then with you know, mobile uh, and tablet clients as well. So these are things that um, are available to us and they're unique to cloud platforms that we may start introducing into the product as well. Um, that's, our, that's our product, that's our product development. Internally as a business, um, we use uh, quite a lot of cloud services. At the minute, we would say uh, we use um, me some messaging applications, which are cloud-based, file sharing applications, and things like that that just make it easier for us to run our business, uh, the actual uh, internal workings, how we communicate with our teams, our support people, and, and internally. So we do adopt, as well as providing a cloud-based platform, we do use uh, cloud-based services as well. I think um, our advice to anyone who's looking at uh, going towards a cloud-based uh, platform for some of their internal processes would be to take small steps. Um, if you uh, don't don't try to sort of boil the ocean from, from the start, take a, a small part of your business that you may identify, uh, like for example a CRM system, your messaging system or some central file storage and, and move it to, to a cloud platform. And see how that works out and then generally evolve it from that point on. Um, also selecting the right cloud provider is, is quite a, an important step because some providers are more specialized and they'll deal with particular financial systems and they're designed for that uh, to, to host that for you. Other platforms are more generic and like for example Microsoft or Amazon platforms where uh, all or any of your infrastructure can be can be hosted there. Uh, right down from your network logins to your email and, and, and other sort of business services. So uh, take, a, take a small step uh, in, into that domain, um, find the right provider and then and rule it out as, as you see fit. Some applications will not benefit from being migrated to the cloud, um, some legacy applications that have been there and um, there's no point in trying to shoehorn that into a cloud platform because you won't see uh, any real great benefit from it. So generally it depends on the organization and the size of the organization and, and where you are in terms of your, uh, your, your technology. 
we use a, a help desk system um, to support our customers, which is cloud-based, which is uh, something we've seen a real uh, benefit from. Um, previously, when we uh, had a, a support system, uh, traditionally there's an email address that you use and your customer gives you the problem and whoever picks up that email address, that email first, it deals with it and responds back or internally has to pass it to someone else. Um, we use a product called Zendesk which completely automates that process for us. Uh, it's cloud-based and it introduces uh, a complete workflow to the support process and that's made a real difference to us, made us more uh, efficient in terms of how we support our customers and more responsive uh, because of a lot of our uh, business um, we have software level agreements with our customers and they uh, have guaranteed response times and so on severity levels and if you're not set up correctly uh, you can really struggle to meet those and this tool has been a real uh, game changer for us in terms of the our customer support side